Uh, bend your brain a little today. Just a bit. Because we're diving into something that sounds really simple, just measuring speed, right? But it turns out to be one of the most, well, counterintuitive concepts out there. We're talking about the speed of light and this, this paradox it presents. Yeah. So we've got this stack of sources, mostly drawing from understanding the speed of light paradox. And our mission really is to unpack what they mean. To get to the bottom of why light speed behaves so strangely. Yeah. Compared, you know, everything else. Exactly. Because our normal intuition, our everyday sense of speed, it's built on relatable things. Like driving a car. Right. Driving. If you're, say, going 60 miles an hour down the highway uh -huh. and another car passes you doing 70. Well, you see them moving away from you at the difference, yeah. right? Just 10 miles an hour faster. Yeah. Simple addition, subtraction. Makes perfect sense. We get that. Yeah. But now, here's where it gets weird. Here's the paradox. Imagine you're in some kind of I don't know, super advanced spaceship, and you're flying incredibly fast, like 99% of speed of light. Let's call it 0.99C. Nearly light speed. Got it. And then you turn on your headlights or, you know, a flashlight where mm. pointing forward. Okay, so your intuition, that car analogy brain, kicks in immediately. Yeah. You think, okay, I'm doing 0.99C. The light itself travels at C. Nah. So surely I should see that light pulling away from me at just... <clears throat> 0.01c. The tiny difference. Yeah, the difference. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you'd think someone just standing still, maybe back on Earth, watching your spaceship fly by. Uh huh. They'd measure that same beam of light moving away from them at the normal speed of light. See, that expectation the traveler sees 0.01c, the stationary person sees c, it, it feels completely logical based on everything we know. But it's not what happens. Not at all. And our sources make it clear this is exactly where common sense just breaks down when you get to these extreme speeds. That intuitive picture is wrong. And this failure of our intuition, it actually opened the door to a whole new way of thinking about, well, reality itself. Absolutely. This, uh, this exact puzzle is what pushed Albert Einstein towards his special theory of relativity back in 1905. Right. That's the framework that resolves this whole thing. It is. It gives us the tools to understand it. Okay, so let's dig into Einstein's solution based on these sources. Yeah. What are the key ideas we need to wrap our heads around? Well, the theory is built on two absolutely fundamental postulates, ideas he just put out there. Okay. The first one is the principle of relativity. Basically, it says the laws of physics like gravity, electromagnetism, all of it work the same way for any observer who is moving at a constant velocity in an inertial frame, as physicists say. So no special viewpoint. Whether you're standing still or drifting smoothly through space, physics looks the same to you. Exactly. That seems, you know, fairly reasonable. Maybe not obvious, but reasonable. Okay. But the second one, that's the real game changer, isn't it? This is it. This is the one that forces everything else to adjust. It's the postulate of the constancy of the speed of light. Meaning? It means the speed of light in a vacuum, that famous number C, about... 299,792 kilometers per second. Or meters per second. Yeah. Right, meters per second. That speed is the same for every single inertial observer, full stop. Wait, wait, so it doesn't matter how fast the flashlight throwing the light is moving? Nope. And it doesn't matter how fast the person measuring the light is moving? Doesn't matter. Everyone, everywhere, measures that same beam of light and gets the exact same speed. C. Okay. Let's go back to our spaceship guy. Flying at 0.99 C shines his light forward. He measures that light moving away from him yeah. at sea. Not pointing at once. Yeah, full speed ahead, see. And the person back on Earth watching this whole thing. They also measure that exact same beam of light traveling at sea. Right, okay, that's the part that just feels impossible. How can that work? How can the light be moving at sea relative to the fast ship and relative to the stationary Earth at the same time? My car brain is yelling, no. And that's the perfect question. Because if the speed of light is absolute, if it is constant for everyone, yeah. then something else that we thought was absolute must actually be flexible. Relative. Just like. Like space and time. Whoa. Space and time aren't fixed. They can change. They have to. For the speed of light to stay constant for you and for me, even if we're moving relative to each other, our measurements of distance and our measurements of time duration must differ. Okay, what does that actually mean, though? How do they differ? It leads to these really famous effects, the consequences of relativity. The big ones are time dilation and length contraction. Time dilation. I've heard of that. That's the clocks run slow thing. Basically, yes. Time itself passes slower for an observer who's moving relative to someone who's considered stationary. So for our spaceship traveler at 0.99C, mm -hmm. 
Their clock, their aging process, everything time-related, is literally running slower compared to the clock back on Earth. It's not an illusion. Time itself is relative. Okay. Yeah. My sense of time would actually slow down. Wild. What about space? You mentioned length contraction. Right. Objects or even the distances between points get measured as being shorter in the direction of motion when viewed by someone moving relative to them. So if I flew past a meter stick really fast... From your perspective, if the stick is stationary relative to Earth, it would appear shorter than a meter in the direction you're flying past it. Squashed. Sort of. Time slows down. Lengths shrink. Yeah. Is there anything else? This is already a lot. There is one more key piece, yeah. The relativity of simultaneity. Okay. It means that two events happening at the exact same time for one observer might not happen at the same time for another observer moving relative to the first. How does that affect measuring speed? Well, speed is distance divided by time, right? right. If observers can't even agree on whether the start and end moments of the light's journey happen simultaneously from different points, defining that time interval gets tricky. Depends on your frame of reference. Okay, wow. So time dilation, length contraction, relativity of simultaneity. Let's try putting these pieces back together for our spaceship traveler and the person on Earth. How did these effects make everyone agree on C? Right, let's walk through it. First, think about the traveler inside the spaceship. Okay, at 0.99 C. From their perspective, they're not moving. Their ship is their stationary world. They pull out their clock, their ruler. They measured the light beam. Yeah. And because their time is dilated, meaning it runs slower relative to Earth, and their measuring rods would be contracted if viewed from Earth, but normal to them, when they measure how far the light goes in a certain tick of their clock using their ruler, the math works out. The yeah. ratio is exactly C. So in their own reference frame, everything seems normal. Physics works. Light speed is C. Exactly. The principle of relativity holds. Now, the interesting part is the Earth observer. Okay, watching the ship and the light beam. They use their clocks and their rulers, the ones stationary on Earth. They see the light beam moving, but they also see the spaceship's clock running slow, time dilation. Right. And they would measure distances on the spaceship, like the ship's length, as being contracted in the direction of motion. Uh -huh. So when the Earth observer measures the speed of that same light beam using their time and their distance measurements, these effects of time dilation and length contraction, as seen from Earth, they combine in a very precise way. A precise way described by? Described by the Lorentz transformations. These are the equations that link space and time measurements between observers moving relative to each other. They replace the simple addition of velocities we use for cars. In these Lorentz transformations, they make it all work out. They do. They show exactly how the slower time and contracted length perceived by the stationary observer compensate perfectly so that when they calculate distance divided by time for that light beam, they also get C. It's like the universe conspires bending space and time just enough for everyone to agree on light speed. That's a great way to put it. The universe doesn't break its own rule about C. It adjusts the very fabric of space-time to uphold it. It's just so incredibly hard to grasp intuitively. Why does it feel so wrong? Well, think about the speeds involved in our everyday lives. Walking, driving, even jet planes. They are tiny fractions of the speed of light, absolutely minuscule. Okay. At those low speeds, the effects of time dilation and length contraction are practically zero. They're far too small to notice or measure without incredibly sensitive instruments. So our intuition, our common sense, it's built entirely on this low speed experience where space seems absolute, time seems absolute, and speeds just add up nicely. Exactly. Our brains evolved in a world governed, for all practical purposes, by Newtonian physics. It's only when you push towards relativistic speeds, significant fractions of C, that these strange effects become noticeable and important. And experiments confirm this. It's not just theory. Oh, absolutely. Countless experiments from particle accelerators to GPS satellites rely on and confirm the effects of special relativity every single day. Time dilation is a real measurable phenomenon. So the big takeaway isn't that light breaks the rules of addition, but that our understanding of space and time as separate fixed things was the actual mistake. Precisely. Newton saw space and time as a static stage. Einstein, forced by the constancy of light speed, revealed their dynamic players interwoven into what we call space-time, which flexes and warps depending on motion and gravity. Okay, let's try to wrap up this, uh, this mind-bender of a deep dive. Sounds good. We started with that paradox. You're going super fast, shine a light. Shouldn't it only move a little faster than you relative to you? Our car intuition says yes. 
But reality, in Einstein's special relativity, says no. The resolution lies in two postulates. The laws of physics are universal for constant motion. And the big one. The speed of light in a vacuum, C, is absolutely constant for everyone, no matter how they're moving. And for that to hold true, our concepts of absolute space and absolute time have to go out the window. They become relative. Leading to real, measurable effects. Time dilation moving clocks run slower relative to stationary ones. And length contraction moving objects measure shorter in their direction of motion relative to a stationary observer. And these aren't just weird side effects. They are how the universe ensures that light speed remains constant. The math, the Lorentz transformations, shows it works out perfectly. So both the traveler going at 0.99 C and the observer on Earth measure the same light beam traveling at C. Our intuition fails simply because we live our lives at speeds where these effects are negligible. It really fundamentally changes how you have to think about reality itself. It really does. It shows our common sense is based on a very limited perspective. Which I suppose leaves you, the listener, with a pretty profound thought to chew on. If time and distance, the most basic coordinates of our existence, aren't fixed absolutes, but change depending on how we move. What does that imply about the nature of the reality we perceive? Yeah, what other fundamental aspects of the universe might operate in ways that completely defy our everyday intuition just because our experience is so limited? Something to ponder until next time.